What a reversal. What a move. What a day. What a day. Well, another day comes to an end. Hope you guys had a great Tuesday out there, but it's it's back to work tonight. It's Tuesday evening. We're getting ready for Wednesday's trading session, and we have a bunch of great profitable trades setting up for Wednesday's hump day trading session. Not to worry. I'm going to cover all my favorite trades in tonight's video that we have a game plan to make some money tomorrow. Before we jump in and get this party going tonight, got a lot we're going to cover in this video. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss tomorrow night video upload and as always if you guys enjoy this video tonight hit that like button for me appreciate you guys supporting the youtube channel but enough of the intro huh let's get ready for wednesday where's the best trade setting up for hump day going into a holiday weekend this weekend so every day really counts here want to make the most of tomorrow's wednesday session boy we got some nice moves going on right now right in case you missed the entire session today we had a big move down on the nasdaq big move down on the s p we have really big moves in one direction on the NASDAQ and the S&P. That tells me to expect one of two, well, maybe both different scenarios for tomorrow. There are two kind of plans of attack I'm getting ready for on both the NASDAQ and the S&P. Obviously, we've got a big bear move down. We're looking to sell some pullbacks here on the E-minis and the NASDAQs. But I definitely have some reversals in store for tomorrow as well. So we're not just selling pullbacks. We'll talk about reversals because anytime these markets go this far, this right, this quickly, there's always potential for a nice big bounce. So I, I want to make sure you guys know the both the short side tomorrow and the long side. I'm going to show you guys all the details as we go deeper into this video tonight. And I'll tell you, oil, oil is right on the edge right now. Oil is bullish. I'll tell you, if these buyers get a little bit more going, we're looking good here for a breakout going higher here on the crude oil. It looks like 115 is going to be the next big round number up overhead here. You can see, though, on the oil, we do have a trading range here. So there's going to be chances for us here to buy off the low, buy the breakouts going higher. There's also some reversal setups I'm watching for on the black gold the crude oil futures for tomorrow as well so we have a lot to cover here tonight long side short side breakouts reversals i'm getting ahead of myself though before we jump in and go over each of my favorite trades for tomorrow let's make sure we're all on the same page because tomorrow is the beginning of some of the biggest news of the week and i do want you to be uh have this stuff on your radar tomorrow wednesday of course uh Really, really quickly, very important, Wednesday and Thursday this week. Remember, Friday is a holiday session. It's a half day. So you got to think, right, if you're if you're working for a prop firm or a trading firm or a money management or an asset management firm, the next, the next two trading days are your chance to finish off the month in the green. So things start to get a little more volatile next couple days here as that scarcity starts to pick up into the end of the month. End of the month holiday weekend the, again a lot of the traders out there who might be underwater this month or might be trying to hit some bonus goal they will be kind of forcing trades or nudging trades along as we go into the end of the week so next couple days be aware of that uptick in volatility big news for tomorrow the gdp report at 8 30 eastern time i would love to think that that's going to be the biggest catalyst tomorrow but i'll bet it's jerome powell jerome powell is a keynote speaker tomorrow not a testimony like we saw last week he is one of many keynote speakers at the ECB Summit or the ECB Forum or whatever they call it, right? Again, as I mentioned in last night's video, we have a lot of the kind of the global politicians and world leaders meeting in various places around the world. He'll be speaking tomorrow, one of the one of the keynote speakers at the ECB Summit. I would imagine that is where we'll get a lot of fresh, juicy headlines the markets may react to here tomorrow. I would guess that's the one that actually moves these markets. The GDP will definitely be no slouch. I mean, obviously, GDP is a big news report. Be watching for movement off of that GDP at 830. And again, if I had to guess tomorrow, that nine o'clock time, right? Probably where we get some of the best catalysts after Jerome Powell and the rest of the crew over at the ECB take center stage uh, tomorrow. Those are the big news events. Obviously, we got the we get the oil report later on in the morning. Remember, if you're trading oil, let me do in our trade room. Be careful around that oil report. It gets really whippy, really, really, really uh, volatile. I always tell my students, 
take about 10 minutes before, five or 10 minutes afterwards, and trade around that news. But again, the big news tomorrow is that Jerome Powell speech at nine o'clock Eastern time. Also, to one heads up, I will not be publishing a video on Thursday afternoon. So tomorrow night's video newsletter, the last one of the week as we go into a very, very highly anticipated holiday season. We'll come back, or sorry, should I say holiday weekend. We'll come back to our normal schedule on Tuesday next week. So final newsletter of the week is, of course, tomorrow night on Wednesday evening. There'll be no video on Thursday. Obviously, I'll see you guys in the trade room uh, as always. Back to our charts here, though. I'm going to go through each one of these charts here tonight and talk about all my favorite trades on each one of these markets, whether you trade one of them or you trade all of them. I can tell you right now, you will learn something new throughout the entire video here tonight. I'll provide different trade variations, different advanced setup ideas, and I always try to save the best stuff towards the end. So. I'll give you a reason to watch all the way to the finish. Let's jump into the NASDAQ here first. The NQ, or of course the QQQs, or the micro NASDAQ. I have students all over the world right now trade NASDAQ, trade the micro NASDAQ, trade the QQQs, or whatever inverse, co inverse correlation you want to use for that. What's the most important thing going on right now on the NASDAQ? There are really two kind of big keys to our roadmap for finding the best trades here uh, for tomorrow. The first one is just the sheer size and strength of this move. Anytime we see, anytime we see a really, first of all, strong move in one direction, we expect a pullback and a retest of that low. That's one of the big parts of this is that anytime we see a strong move, right? We expect that sellers will come in and they'll want to sell that pullback and try to go back and retest that low. At that point, do we bounce off that low with, with what could be one of the best reversal setups we get of the week? Or do we see it break down below that low and, of course, run down to those next big levels, 11,501, 11,459, waiting below? First clue is the strength of that move, telling us we should expect a pullback and a retest of the low. The second part of this big move is the sheer size of this move. It's a very large move. And keep in mind, everything I'm talking about right now in the NASDAQ can almost always be applied to the S&P. So feel free to interchange these back and forth here. What does the size of that move tell us? The size of a move, anytime we see a really big move right in one session, Anytime we see a big move, we expect a deep pullback. Why? To attract more bears into the market. You know, think about it. If we have this big move down today, we're going to come in tomorrow. I'm sure there will definitely be sellers here that will say, you know what? I don't want to sell way down here. But if I could get this thing to pull back for me here, right? If I get a really deep pullback, now I can sell at a better price. And the second kind of part about this is, is that anytime we see a big move, we almost always end up going into a trading range. So ranges are very, very likely at some point here tomorrow. Now think about this. What might happen is, is we may see it pull back, retest that low, and then go into a range from there, right? That is very common. We may also see it start to go sideways overnight, develop that trading range, right? Uh, that, that, that range. And then, excuse me, my, my drawing tool messed up there, right? We may go sideways overnight and then see the pullback, right? So it's, it's very important to keep in mind a range is very likely here. It could be before the pullback. It could be after the pullback. That's one part. We don't quite know what sequence it will be in, but that is going to be an important part of this. Is we definitely want to be, be ready for that here tomorrow. The second big clue here right now is that bear wedge. Okay, wedges are very, very important clues because just like a spike in channel, wedges tell us the base of that wedge is where everybody wants to get that next short, right? We already know it's a big move today. We're expecting a relatively deep pullback. We already know it's a strong move today. We're expecting a retest of that low. The wedge is just a little bit more information for us to know kind of exactly 
where the best entries are going to be here. So now that we know kind of what's affecting this market right now, what do the bears want to do? The bears, obviously, they want to get up and they want to sell this thing back down. How about the buyers? The buyers would love to either grab a bounce off that low, which could really be a nice reversal for us tomorrow, or the buyers also, every once in a while, every once in a while, these big moves down, they'll pop up and then maybe a, a GDP report or maybe a Jerome Powell speech, something might break this thing down and we may get a full-blown reversal. So buyers are definitely ready for that opportunity, but right now, though, they definitely have to, they definitely have to respect the bears at this point. So how do we make some money on this information? Now that we know what's kind of affecting this market, we know kind of where the buyers and sellers now want to be trading, how do we make money on it? The key that you want to think about is, is whenever I see a really big move in one day, and I always tell this to my students, the big question is, is how far back do we get a pullback, right? How far back is a good pullback? And the way that I always answer it is, is right when you start to think, huh, Maybe we've reversed. Once you start feeling like this is a reversal, is usually right about how far it needs to pull back. What you want to think about here for a pullback is there are two basic, well, three basic types of pullbacks. One will be a shallow pullback. Let's say, for example, here that all we get is a really shallow pullback that kind of goes into a range, right? Remember, a range is very possible to set up here before we get that deeper pullback later on in the session. Let's say, for example, all we get is that modest pullback here above that 785 area end up popping up. At this point, what's my concern? My concern is I might be selling too low. So the best way to short this now is to use what we call a trap setup. Trap setups are your bread and butter. They're your favorite trade whenever you're worried about selling relatively low. In this scenario, this market will not feel like a reversal. So what you want to do is you have to get in as high as you possibly can. I want the buyers try a couple times and use that trap setup, as we call it, in our trade room, in our video classes to sell off of that high. Shallow pullback, think about a trap. Now, as we pull back deeper here, this is where the fun begins because again it's gonna feel like oh my goodness maybe maybe we're maybe we're gonna reverse here right now once this thing pulls back deep enough now what you want to do is is you want to play that feeling right understand there's a lot of inexperienced traders that will see that pullback they're not going to look at the overall context of the market and they're going to say oh see i told you there's some support down here let's buy this and once those buyers start getting in to buy it think about exactly where their stops are right think about where their exits are and target selling right into those stop losses now our job is not done yet once we run the stops by selling into stops, right? With a failure pattern, we pop up, the buyers go, oh shoot, maybe we have reversed. They try to hold, once they commit, we know where stops are, we're selling the stops. Now, as we try to make that move lower, where, does the, where do they want to go? They want to go back down and retest that low, right? Because again, it's a strong move in one direction. They want to take out that low. Now, look left, find a new channel off of that low, mark it up off of that high, look left, find some prior swings, and grab that first test off the high of that channel. This is the, this is the money sequence here. The deep pullback, again, fools all the inexperienced traders, people who are not putting this in context. It'll feel like a reversal the way it shoots up like it did this morning before that dump off the high. Buyers come in, they try to buy that pullback. We're selling right into those stops. And then as we go lower, grab that trap, grab that failure pattern, whatever you do, grab that first test off the high of that channel. I like traps. It could be failures. It could be any of the entry setups that we talk about in that free video, uh, in that free trading class uh, on our website. Which, by the way, if you haven't taken that free class yet, I know most of you guys have taken the course, you've learned all the setups. You're trading this stuff on your own. But listen, if you're here for the first time today, if you haven't taken the free trading course on the website to learn all the setups, I'll put a little link for you in the upper right-hand corner there. Grab that pop-up. Learn the roadmap we use in our trade room. If you're sick and tired of missing the best trades each day or you're taking
taking too many losses or you're trying to find a way to transition into full-time trading, the roadmap I teach in that free trading course, you'll learn all my favorite entry patterns like traps, like, set, like, like, like failures. More importantly, though, you'll learn where and when to use them for the best processes. So grab that link up top there. Take the free class. You'll learn all the good stuff behind that uh, on the website. Now, next question is, is that as we pull back, when can I buy it, right? At what point does this market start to turn bullish, right? Can I, can I buy this market now as it goes higher here? What does the long side look like? Well, again, we know we're expecting a deep pullback. So we're not going to get fooled into thinking a deep pullback is a reversal. However, if we start seeing one of these two patterns, this will be your cue that for whatever reason, again, it could be a GDP report, it could be, a, it could be an ECB announcement tomorrow or a headline out of the ECB summit. Now, we know we're waiting for that pullback and we're looking for those buyers to come in and try and fail. If the buyers come in up top here and they jump off that moving average, what do we call this? We call this a one, two, three reversal. At that point now, I'm going to mark up that high. I'm going to mark up that low. I'm going to drill down to my entry time frame. This is a 4,000 tick chart, by the way. You can see the upper, the upper left hand corner there. I'm going to grab that new channel off the high, drill down, and I want to find that entry off the low of that channel. It could be a trap. It could be a failure. It could be a pullback combination. Now, whichever entry pattern we get off of that low, what is my target at that point? What's a good target? Here's a really easy way to fine tune the runner target as we go basically back up into the range we came from here today. Think of it this way. The first leg and the third leg. That will give you a really nice fine-tuned exit target if we get that one, two, three reversal going higher. Another pattern set up I would keep on your radar for a reversal is a pop and a grind. Pop and grinds are very common among reversals because a pop and grind where it pops up and begins to separate off the moving average. The minute this thing separates, the minute it separates and starts to hover off of that moving average is when you know things are getting very, very bullish at that time. We saw the pop and the grind going lower earlier, and that leads to another leg in the same direction. What do you do if it goes into that into the sell zone and then grinds as it goes higher? Simple. Draw a trend line. Right off those highs. Okay, don't go, don't go worry about a big channel like that. Draw it nice and tough the highs, find that low, and then start looking left, find those prior swings, grab that entry off the low of that channel. Again, could be a trap, could be a failure, could be a pullback combo. Think about that first leg and third leg. That'll give you a really easy way to fine tune this. Again, though, remember on this pullback, right when you start thinking, oh my goodness, is this going to reverse? That's exactly when you want to buckle down and say, no, remember, remember how big that move was yesterday. All the bears are going to come in and want to sell this thing back down to retest that low. Now, at this point, how do I, how do I buy off of that low? Right? Can I buy off that low? I definitely can. What if we go sideways down here? Right? What if we go sideways? How do we trade that? Well, let's keep this video going, shall we? Let's go out and grab the S&P because the S&P is obviously very similar here to the NASDAQ. Over on the E-mini here tonight, and again, pretty much everything we talk about right now on the E-mini could be applied to the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ can be applied to the E-mini. They're almost identical markets here as we go. What are the two main components here right now? The exact same thing as the NASDAQ. First thing is, it's a very strong move down. Anytime we see a strong move, we expect a pullback and a retest. It's a very large move down which tells us to expect a relatively deep pullback. Why? To make it worth the seller's time. And then second thing, of course, is, is anticipate a range, right? Ranges, again, uh, uh, ranges may happen right now and then the pullback. Ranges may happen where we get that pull back, back down, and then into the range. It just depends on what happens here in the overnight session. We also know that we have a wedge. And that wedge, even though this one is a little bit wonky, as you can see, what ended up happening here was they took the amount of the move up 
and they basically projected it right going lower amazing how that works right amazing how the mark can jump up and roll over we call these double ups and double downs anytime a market really just collapses after going up and then rolling over you can pretty consistently take the amount up and project it going lower it's a very very easy way to find an objective it's just based on symmetry as you can see it looks like what happened though here was this was a wedge and of course, it looks like they broke down below that wedge and kind of chopped it down until they took out that one-to-one -one off that high. It's still a wedge, though. It's definitely a wedge. This is definitely the feeling of a wedge. It has that kind of collapsing, that heavy kind of cinder block, you know, rolling downhill kind of feeling to it which is always very classic of a wedge here. Same basic idea here on the S&P. If all we get is a shallow pullback, think about those traps, and that might end up developing into the range eventually, which we'll cover here in a second. So be aware of that, right? A shallow pullback may be the kind of new top of that new trading range coming in. Again, can we go up, get those buyers to fail, sell into those stop losses, and then bring it over, find that channel, and hit that short on the way back down to retest the low, right? We've talked about that already. Will it pop, pull back, and blast, right? Will it go, will it pop up one, two, blast, and give you that one, two, three reversal? At that point now, momentum shifts for the buyers. We can drill down and find that first test is the best test, right? That one, two, three reversal, draw that channel. And again, I'm, I'm keeping it simple here right now. This could be a trap setup, a failure setup off of that low, right? First leg, third leg will give you a good idea of where a good final target is. If the buyers can take this thing over here tomorrow, right, which doesn't look very likely right now, but that is po always possible, right? Obviously, back to retest that high would be the objective, but don't hold your breath on that. It's a very big move to reverse. But again, you know, like I said, right, we get, we get a big summit tomorrow, get GDP report tomorrow. Anything is possible. We should definitely not root out, rule out any direction uh, whatsoever. And again, one of the easy giveaways of reversal is that pop and that grind, right? If it pops up and starts to separate off that moving average, that's usually your giveaway here now, right? Those pop and grinds are, 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 pretty, are pretty straightforward. Mark that high, mark that low, and then, of course, find those traps, pullbacks, right? Failures there off of off of that off that low. Okay, that covers all the bases we've talked about already on the on the Nasdaq. Now, let's say one scenario. We go up, we sell it back down, we take out that low. How do I buy it now? Right? Because at that point now, as we always say, mission accomplished. Okay, right? Mission and accomplish that point. Remember, it's a strong move down. We're expecting them to want to retest that low. Right when sellers take their profit at that low, this is where we get a chance to grab the bounce. You'll notice I'm not a huge fan of trying to pick a bounce right now. It can be difficult to pick a bottom on moves like this. I do realize we're at major support. I realize we're at that wedge support. I do realize there probably will be a lot of buyers out there trying to fade into this and buy into this move here right now. But as, as somebody who teaches new traders all day, every day in our trade room, there is no reason why this market cannot keep on bleeding lower here until we reach that 3805, 3795 area below. So my safest, your safest bet, again, and I'll let you make the decision on this. We do expect we do expect a pullback here, but when that pullback begins, you know, again, it could happen here, right? It could go lower and then happen, right? So it's very difficult to tell at what point is it start buying here. The best way to buy this market is to wait for it to go up, let it come back down, then buy it as it goes back up and that double bottom kind of reversal off of that low. You want to use we call the two try rule here. So we go up, we sell back down again. We retest that low. Now, the moving average comes over. Okay, this is where the money is right here. We go up, fail, back down again, retest that low. Moving average now comes over, and now you've got the weak hands, right? Remember, the professional sellers are selling up here. Okay, they're not selling down here. These are not the smart money sellers down here. These are the weak hands. This is the sucker that just sat down with a pocket full of chips at the poker table and wants to learn to play the game, right? This is this is this is not the the big smart money in the market. Let those smaller 
traders try once, try twice, and again, think about where their stops are, right? Think about where their stops are. It's all about catalyst at this point. You have to remember, this is a bear market. I don't care if I'm at a support level. I don't care how far oversold the RSI says we are. We are still very bearish, and for all we know, they're going to break right on down through that low here. So if I'm going against the overall momentum, I need some sort of catalyst to help my trade succeed, and that's exactly where a stop run will come into play. The key is, is let those bears wrap that noose right around their neck. Once they've got those two tries in, think about where are their exits, and then look for, what I always do is, is look for that signal coming off a trend line or a trap line. You'll learn a lot more about this inside that free video course, right? That free trading course linked up in the upper right-hand corner. We'll show you hundreds of examples of how to time these entries on our favorite futures markets, right? Things like S&P, oil, gold, things like that. Uh, bottom line though is, once those bears get short twice, we know stops are there and now we're buying into those stop losses. Now, where does the market wanna go at that point? What do you think? It wants to go right back up and take out that high. Okay, the market will try to rotate inside this trading range. So once we run those stops here now from those bears, now well, your job is just getting good here now. Now as we go higher here now, now we go out, we draw a trend line off those highs, we draw it down off that major low to find a new channel, we, we, we drill down to our faster time frames to find the swings, and we wait for that pullback. That will usually get us underneath the moving average. I can look for traps, I can look for failures below the moving average and look for pullbacks as we're going. Here's the key though. The key is, is you wanna get that next entry before, ultimately, before we take out that high, right? That's kind of the key to getting that turn. What you gotta be careful with is, is if we go up, back, one, two, and then blast up again, and then now you're getting that channel coming in, and now you're walking right into an area where you have to expect a lot more bears are going to be waiting, right? I want this pullback before I get back up to retest those highs. That's a very important part of trading the turn off of that low. So now we've covered here how to buy it off of that low, and we've covered some reversals here as well. Let's talk about a trading range here real quickly here. And one thing too, if we do keep going lower, right, like I mentioned, we do have space to go lower here, 38.05, 37.94 half or so. The S&P and the NASDAQ, uh, the S&P has a little bit more space, I believe, the NASDAQ does. No, never mind, sorry, backwards, right? So NASDAQ has a lot more space to go, right before the next big, big level down below, S&P does not. So e either way, there still is plenty of space here for this to keep going lower. If we do keep on grinding down, nothing changes. We're waiting for that deep pullback, that retest of that low, right? That one, that two, and that bounce back up. Same basic sequence, even if we keep going a little bit lower from here. It's one of the big reasons why you can be very careful trying to scale into this if you're not familiar with the way this stuff works, right? Be very careful uh, buying here into in a, in a bear move down. Now, one thing you want to keep in mind here on a range, there's a couple different ways we'd like to trade ranges in our trade room. First of all, if we, the minute we see a range or develop, what you want to think about next is, is you want to find levels of resistance up above the range, okay? So let's imagine now for a second, we get a range brewing here. And the first thing I'm gonna do is, is look left and find, okay, there's a prior swing, maybe a trend line coming down. I wanna find levels of resistance up above the trading range. Ranges act like magnets, okay? Ranges act like magnets. And what you wanna think about here is, is you wanna try to get up above that trading range. Again, this goes right along with what we've talked about so far, big move today. We know that bears will be waiting up here. Again, right when it feels like, oh my goodness, maybe it's a reversal. That's probably when it's time to buckle down, remember the game plan, and look for that what for that buyer failure, right? That buyer failure as it comes in. Once those buyers come in and try to buy this thing, Again, we have to assume bears are waiting up here. Once those buyers commit, think about where their stops are and sell right into 
those stop losses. Now, where does the market want to go at that point? Where's the objective? The objective is back down to retest the low of that trading range. So we're selling into stop losses at resistance levels above the trading range. Okay. One thing about ranges is if we see a range develop down here, we can really start to be a little more aggressive at the shorts because anytime you see a range, the range becomes a magnet. So we don't need as deep of a pullback if we start going sideways here. Just be aware of that kind of small, it's all change of personality. If we start going sideways tomorrow, I won't need as, as much of a pullback because again, that range will act as a magnet. Now, also too, don't forget, is that the amount we go above the range is the amount we go below the range, okay? The reason I mention this is because this next support level down here, right, oftentimes will end up running down to this area and then snapping back up into that trading range. For example, let's say we go lower here, and all of a sudden now the bears come in, they try once, they try twice, and think about now buying it back up into that range. Okay, this is one very sneaky part about trading ranges is that as it pokes through that low, you've got to be careful because again, the amount we go above the range will oftentimes be the same amount we go below the range. And so we definitely want to sell off the high of that range, you know, using a buyer failure, but be very careful chasing that move lower because oftentimes it will snap right back up into that range, especially after a day like today where we might have a hard time time recruiting more sellers at a low price, right? If the market punches up and then slams lower, you got to think there may not be a lot of bears that want to sell down there, right? Again, same thing on the, on the NASDAQ, right? We're at some big support levels below us. So remember, the key to this one though is, the key here is, is let them try twice. Okay, why twice? Because we're going against momentum right? Combine that two try failure with that pendulum swing at a level of support and you get a great shot here now for the reversal going back up into that range, right? Keep in mind too, keep in mind too, if we ever see bear market into a, into a, into a range, we pop up, we get that buyer failure, blast lower, there's my pendulum swing, right? Makes sense so far? Now, as we go lower here, the bears come in and they blast, right? They jump off that moving average. They say pendulum, who, right? What, wait, I didn't see a pendulum, right? The bears torch right through that area. This is exactly where a pop and grind comes into play, right? This is exactly where a pop and grind will come into play. It's exactly where a one, two, three breakout will come into play. Am I making sense here? So again, it's got to go reach that pendulum and then the bears will come in and say, no, 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 we're not done yet and blast it through that low. Once that happens, this range is no more. And now we trade that new channel. We trade, you know, again, we've talked a lot about these already here tonight already, but we go out and we find that first pullback off the high of that channel. All right, guys, is, is, is that making sense? Is that, is that making sense? I know range is a little bit tricky here. If you're enjoying this stuff, by the way, hit that like button for me. Hopefully by now I've earned a subscribe here um, on this channel. So keep that on your radar tomorrow. If we start going sideways, sell the high, and then look for that reversal coming in off of that low. Those reversals could really be some good trades tomorrow. They really could, especially after a day like today when we may have a hard time finding sellers uh, who, who, who are looking to sell low. Right. All right. Over to the over to the oil here right now. Wrapping things up here on the crude, or like a lot of my students right now on the USO. All the stuff can pretty much be applied to any of the ETF counterparts. What's the most important factor right now on the on the oil, the black gold? Again, we do have some news tomorrow at 10:30 Eastern time on oil. So keep that on your radar. Historically speaking, the most difficult day of the week trade oil is a Wednesday because of that inventory report at 10.30 Eastern time. Your goal on a Wednesday is to make your money as early as you can out of that news report. So keep that in mind here for tomorrow. There are really two basic components here right now. It's all about this range, right? The first one is this bull range. And it's not just a bull range. It's a bull range with rotation off the low.
What do I mean by that? Well, it's a bull market, right, into a trading range. And you'll notice right now the market runs lower, and now we shoot back higher. Now, we just talked about this, right? We talked about this, of course, for the bear side. But think about this now, right? The amount we go below that range is usually about the amount we go above the range. So right now, we're definitely bullish, but I can't buy here. Right? I, I can't I can't buy here, can I? No, I can't buy here right now. Because why? The range below us is a magnet. But I'll tell you right now, if the buyers can nudge this thing a little bit further here, they can break through that pendulum swing into potentially, I mean, let's face it, 115 is probably the next big objective here. Right? Oil loves to make five dollar moves right now. We're coming off one ten. You know, I get some breakout targets up here at one thirteen, one fourteen, but I mean let's 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 save all the let's save all the all the window dressing, right? It wants to go to that one fifteen, right? That one fourteen eighty four is where this market uh, wants to go here. I would expect if they can slingshot this high. I would expect that'd be a good time to expect a pullback and their leg going higher, right? I don't expect the market to reverse off. The, it, it might, anything's possible, but I wouldn't expect it to. Uh, to. Use that as a target, get that pullback, and, right, and then keep riding it uh, up from there. So bull range with rotation off the low. Think about that slingshot, right? Go, 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 going higher here. And then, of course, the next one here is that wide open space. And there's a lot of open space up here. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we had that big drop uh, in the oil price. There is basically just a big vacuum just waiting to get filled between this 112 half and that 115. So a lot of open space, unlike on the NASDAQ and the S&P, where the NASDAQ and the S&P have a lot of support now right below them, right? So it may not be easy to sell the S&P or the NASDAQ as it goes lower, Oil seems to be the opposite of that, right? As it goes higher, we got plenty of open space up here to stretch our legs. So how do we trade this stuff? Well, first of all, you got to be ready for some breakouts, right? Now, we talked about four different breakouts in last night's video. Do you remember what the progression of those breakouts were? What were they again? There was four of them, right? First one was a strong pop-up, a shallow pullback, a lower low in price, sorry, shallow pullback, higher high in price, and a trap. We call these two tried traps. They're very, very common setups. Anytime we see a strong move, a shallow pullback, a higher high in price, right? Now we know professionals, smart money traders, big lot traders, they're getting in right below that low, right? We know we have that to look forward to tomorrow. Now, sometimes we don't get that trap. Sometimes that breakout just pops and grinds. And if it grinds like that, whatever do we do? We mark off that high. We mark off that low. We don't, we don't do this. We don't go wide like this, right? That's a waste of time, okay? The minute it starts to grind like this, right? Look back here. Look back here. So it pops up, pop, grind, grind, grind. What do you do? Draw a channel off the high, off that low, right? Look left, find that prior swing, hit that trap, okay? Same idea up here right same idea find that find that channel so that pop up grind right again i'd love to get that pop higher high in that trap but we may not get it so you won't be ready for that pop up grind going higher mark that high mark that low you got it right you got it grab that trap and again think about now that first leg third leg going higher from there or maybe it goes pop up pull back and jump off that moving average. This one is is one of the most common, right? Easy. Mark off that high, mark off that low. You got it, grab your trap, grab your pullback, right off of that low. And again, I am really simplifying this right now to keep this short tonight, as short as I can. Uh, I go into a lot more detail of the exact entry setups, the rules to use inside that free trading course linked up in the upper right-hand corner uh, of, this, of this video here. That's another one here as we go. Another one, the fourth one, right? The fourth one. Let's say, for example, we get that one, two, three breakout, right? One, two, three breakout. We get that nice long off the low. They go back up now and they retest the high, right? We get that one, two, three breakout. We buy that first test of the low. They go back up. They retest the high. Now, do they keep going higher? No. Now they pull back even deeper. And what happens now is, is now we have to rope in the bears. The bears come in. They try to sell back down. It's not a bear market yet. 
the buyers come in and hit those stops for that breakout pullback. That's the last step of this progression, right? Because as it goes higher, buyers aren't going to want to be buying high anymore, right? They're not going to want to buy way up here, right? They'll buy low, but then, of course, eventually, once that one, two, three breakout, once that two try trap, once those patterns emerge and they and they and they, and they make some money, then wait for that deeper pullback and get that retest of that high. Okay, those are some really easy breakout setups as we're going higher here. What if we come back down off that high? Can I buy down here? Can I buy over here? Absolutely, you can. It's a bull market into a trading range. There are two basic setups you want to think about. If we do pull back right now, we get a nice looking channel setting up here. What's my problem though? My problem will be, first of all, we will fail rotation. So if we end up pulling back right away here right now, now we know where that pendulum swing is and we know the pendulum will put us right about 110, right, right about there. So if we pull back and run into this channel here, if we don't take out that pendulum swing, what's my concern? My concern is I'm buying too high. And what's the best entry setup, at least in my world, to avoid buying high? Traps, right? Try them once, try them twice. I wanna buy low right? That's the money trade. And also too, the up, grab that channel. Again, I, I won't go into, into all the details again here once again, but that same basic sequence here, right? So if we go back to lower that channel, again, we're bullish, but we're not quite getting down where we'd like to be, right? I'd like to be buying at the low of that, you know, below the low, right? At support below the low of that trading range. If I'm buying right around the edge of that trading range, watch that trap. That's where smart money will be getting in for tomorrow. And then again, grab that trap, that failure, whatever entry we get off of that channel. And again, where's my target? Back up to retest the high. Okay. What if we really dump, right, and come back and take out these lows? Good, good. It's a perfect spot to be a buyer. What's the problem though? Momentum is the problem. Why? Because anytime we rotate from one side of the range all the way to the other, just like the buyers have a lot of momentum right now, the bears, the sellers will have a lot of momentum going lower. How do we deal with that? We use the two try rule. We use a two try failure. Let them try once, let them try twice. Grab a trap below that first try. One of my favorites, right? Once, twice, and again, same basic idea. Think about now the market will want to rotate back up again. And then, of course, we go out and find that new channel. We drill down and grab that first test off of that low, right? And again, I'm simplifying it right now, right? We wait for the proper signal, which you'll learn in that, in that free video class, right? So two try failure back up into that range. Last but not least here, how do we sell it? How do we sell it? Well, first of all, I do not want to sell off this high right now. These are, this is an easy, easy, easy loss to get into, into the bad habit of is trying to fade a, a, a bull market with a, basically a bull range, right? You can be very, very careful with this because it's, again, open space above us. We're not at a major top anymore. This is not a very desirable short at this point because we are so bullish. However, if I can take out those lows, if those bears can come over, and hold that pullback and what? And blast, right? And jump off that moving average. Didn't do it here, right? Got to do it here. So again, if they can take out some of those lows, take out that pendulum, and then from there, do we see a pop and grind, right? Pop and grind, absolutely. Mark that low, mark that high, find that short, right? Off that channel. We talked about this a few moments ago on that, on that range illustration at the end of the S&P and the NASDAQ. Same basic idea, right? It's got to, it's got to take out that pendulum swing. In this case, I want to say take out those lows, right? Take out those lows and keep going with a grind going lower or take out those lows, pull back and just jump going lower there. That'll be enough momentum now to break down this channel, break the range down, give us a new trend, and now we can go out and we can sell those first tests off the high of that channel. Where do we think the market wants to go if it reverses off this high right now? It's gonna wanna go back to 108. There's that range from yesterday. There's that prior week close. 
Remember, as we get into Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, the prior week closing price becomes a very big psychological magnet. If we do reverse here, think about 107.06, at least 108, right? At least 108 as we go back into that range where we basically began uh, this, this third week or fourth week of the month of July. All right, guys, got a pretty good plan of attack here right now. I like the breakouts. I like the pullbacks on this. But as always, right, we'll take whatever we can get tomorrow. We'll take whatever the market gives us. And speaking of tomorrow, don't forget, 8 o'clock Eastern time. We get the game plan put, put together tonight. Great, great roadmap for tomorrow. Tomorrow morning, we come back and we trade this stuff together. If you're looking for a great place to learn and trade along, our trade room's a great place to be every day. We open up every morning, 8 o'clock Eastern time. I'll put all the membership links, all the free class links. If you're here for the first time right now, grab the free course, learn the basics, and then I'll see you, of course, as part of that, as part of that free class. I'll show you more about that stuff so you're ready for trading with us in our trade room. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap things up here for now. Hope you learned a bunch here tonight. Hope you use this information now to earn a bunch tomorrow. Got a big day coming tomorrow. And again, only a couple days left before this holiday weekend. So kick some butt tomorrow. Follow the game plan. Don't force those reversals right now. And don't forget, if you have any questions on the way, you can always drop me some questions in the comment section. Uh, call the office. I'm always here. We got live chat on the website as well. All right, guys, I'm out of here for now. Get some rest. We'll see you guys tomorrow morning at the opening bell in the trade room. If not, we'll see you guys tomorrow night, last video of the week. My name is Joseph. Be well out there. Be nice to each other, will you? And be here next time. Adios, amigos. Bye-bye for now.